you guys are my recorded lecture uh, lab. So the first bit of this program and the code is just remarks. And they're quite extensive. There's a lot of them. For our, for your calculator program, you could probably get away with something that's closer to this bit, right? Because we have the, the first three things that I want at the top is your name. And by the way, please don't put Peter Watson. Uh, put your first and last name and then what lab and uh, the month and the year. And then we just have a a couple of sentences. So, you know, you'd have a line where this is SETI program, it would be, you know, trip cost calculator. Um, and then we have just a couple of sentences describing the program. And a lot of people have trouble with this. So I always say, just pretend that I walk up to you and I say, well, what does this program do? Explain it to me. And whatever you would say would be kind of what you type into your description in your code. Um, now, there is a little bit of nuance to that. And uh, the nuance is, is that we want to be a little bit more specific than we would be if I was just, so if I ask you, what does this program do? And you say, it calculates the trip cost. That's not great <laughs> because it's not detailed enough. You're assuming that I know what you're talking about, right? And because I do know what you're talking about, okay, I got it. But we have to always assume that the person that we're trying to communicate with has no idea what it is that we're talking about. So uh, it would be a little bit more detailed than just that one sentence. It would be something along the lines of, this program calculates the cost in fuel for a trip given input values of distance, cost per gallon, and miles per gallon. Now that's fairly, still not very long, right? It's fairly succinct, it's fairly compact, uh, but it is detailed. You don't have to, for the most part, explain everything but we don't want to overgeneralize either. So it's a little bit of a trick for our, you know, for the trip cost, you may have um, two lines, two sentences, maybe three sentences as the description. If you have that, you're pretty good. Um, the reason that the Drake equation has all of this stuff is because for their, uh, the identifiers for their variables, um, they have used, very generic representation. So we have an R, a P, an N, an F, an I, and a C, and I have no idea what that means, right? So if we're good in our code and we create variable names that are kind of self-explanatory, then we don't have to remark them. So for instance, If I'm here and I'm getting some user input and it's the trip cast calculator and I have distance. So maybe I have, um, I've, I would name this uh, distance miles. That's a pretty good name. It's pretty descriptive. And I kind of don't have to really have an expl uh, explanation of what that means, right? Uh, Given that I know how the, what the program is doing, distance miles explains the variable, explains the value that it's holding. It explains what we're using the memory spot for, what's going to go into it. Um, I, I told you uh, when we talked about the program that MPG is probably good because I'm pretty sure everybody knows what MPG means, miles per gallon. So you don't really have to spell it out. With cost per gallon, if you used CPG, you probably have to, because I don't know what CPG is. Well, I do, but <laughs> only because I know that we're, we have to deal with the cost per gallon. So uh, one way to do that, if, if let's say that you used CPG and you didn't want to write uh, a remark you know, up here, CPG stands for cost per gallon. 
what you could do is you could remark your code to the right of the code. So uh, here's my Drake equation. And I could say, I could write a remark right here. So I could do a dollar sign space, a dollar sign, a number sign space. And then I could say, you know, uh, CPG So there's another way to remark code. So typically we remark sections of our code. What is it that we're doing here? What are we doing here? What are we doing here? And we do that before we write the code, before that chunk of code. Um, if you would like to remark an individual line of code, a lot of times we do that to the right of that line of code. So like this. Now, obviously, you know, if this would say uh, CPG equals, and in our case, it would be a float. And then our input would be not about planets. Uh, it would be the, uh, please input the cost per gallon, right? And so this would be the remark. It's easy enough to explain what CPG stands for. Or you could just type cost per gallon. Remember, no spaces in, in uh, uh, identifiers for variables, the names of variables. I'm going to use name and identifier interchangeably. The more correct term is identifier, but um, whatever. <laughs> the identifier is the name that we give it, we assign it. So that's another way to remark your code. So once we have rem uh, remarked our code at the beginning, then I get into my four steps. So I'm going to display the welcome. Again, this is kind of unique to Python because Python doesn't have a uh, fixed user interface that we create that kind of explains what the program does. We can't have a help button in a menu that says, you know, about and, and uh, we explain what the program does. So we do that by <clears throat> just putting some stuff on the screen. Again, name of the program, what it does, and then maybe a user instruction or two. So in our case, you know, it would be, um, please enter, well, it would be trip cost program, uh, trip cost program. Welcome to the trip cost calculator. Um, and then we probably have this, you know, a, a please enter the uh, some instructions. Please enter the distance in miles, uh, the cost per gallon in uh, dollars and cents, and, and the uh, miles per gallon. And then because of the way that I said we should create the program, you should create the program. Uh, using the float type uh, instead of using integers, um, you could give the user the the option. You could say, "Hey, you can enter things in decimal form, or you can use whole numbers. It's up to you." Uh, because that's why we use the float, so that they could use, you know, they could round, or they could be precise, and the program wouldn't care. Um, so that's kind of this first part where we just print stuff out. Secondly, we're getting user input and we're doing value assignments. So, you know, we only have three. There's six lines here. We only have three lines. And again, all of our input is float input. Uh, lastly, we're doing a, a calculation. And Patrick had an issue because this, if you do it on two lines, you did it with two calculations. Um, he had to, what did you do? You did a, a float for this? Patrick, I can't hear you. Uh, did that, can you hear me? Yeah, no, I got you. I got you. This computer has two monitors, so I can't figure out where the okay. mouse ever goes. Yeah, anyway. no, I, mine, mine does the same thing. Um, 
Uh, what I did was I did not specify in the input statement, I did not force it into float, okay? Okay. And then I had a line that calculated out gallons, which is miles mm -hmm. divided by yeah. mg. When I went to assign it to the variable gallons, it crashes because it doesn't know what kind of variables those two are. So by defining your inputs as floats, that fixed it? So, uh, Patrick had an issue where he just did this without the parentheses there. Input, what percentage of blah, 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 right? So, um, instead of using a float, in this case, it's an int, but instead of using a float. And so, what happened when he used that in a calculation is that the result ended up being a string. And I'm surprised it did the calculations correctly. Um, probably because it's a simple calculation. Um, because there's a difference between, where am I? Um, there's a difference between string variables and numeric values. And I think I mentioned it before but I'm not sure, so I will mention it again. <clears throat> if that is a string variable, if that's a string, then that's read as 587. And you cannot do calculations with 587. Um, what we need to do is we need to actually see this as a numeric value. And what's the difference? Well, a string has three characters next to one another. Five, eight, seven. And actually, it's just the character five. It's not the number five. There's no like places associated with this. So if I actually have this as a numeric value, then we read that as 587. And that's because this is the ones place, this is the tens place, and this is the hundreds place. And if I had more places, et cetera, right? Thousands, ten thousands, um, hundred thousands, millions. So when I say this, I'm actually doing a multiplication, right? I'm saying 587. So I'm actually doing three calculations. I'm doing five times 100, that's 500. I'm doing eight times 10, that's 80. And I'm doing seven times one, that's seven. seven. So 587. We just don't think about doing the calculations because we don't need to. That's how we're taught to pronounce it. But that's what we're doing. So this can be multiplied or divided or we can do stuff with it. Um, whereas this top one cannot because that's a five, an eight, and a seven. And it's, like I said, it's not even associated with the ones place. It is the character five next to the character eight next to the character seven. Which is why, uh, very simply, if I do this, and that's my string variable, then you can very quickly understand that I can't actually multiply that by two and get a valid answer. Because what's two times A? Is it AA? I don't know. There is, you can't multiply a letter, right? Is it B? <laughs> I don't know, uh, right? Um, <clears throat> So this, on the other hand, over here, in the numeric form, could be multiplied by two or three or 10, okay? So that's the difference between uh, a string and an actual numeric value like a float, which is a, just basically a, a numeric value that can have decimal places, or, um, 
or an integer, which is a numeric value, uh, just whole numbers cannot have decimal places. Um, so <clears throat> now I told you, and uh, hopefully I'm sharing the second screen again. Uh, I told you that we can have one or two lines of calculations. Um, and the reason is because we have to figure out gallons used and gallons used is um, what distance divided by miles per gallon, distance traveled divided by miles per gallon. Uh, and then we multiply that answer, which is the amount of gallons that we used, uh, by the cost per gallon. And that gives us our trip cost. So you can see how you could kind of combine that. So if I have gallons used equals distance divided by MPG, and then I do trip cost. And by the way, this is just notes. I'm just shortcutting everything. I wouldn't use TC and D and GU uh, when I'm creating the program. Uh, is gallons used times uh, cost per gallon. You can see that this is the same as this. So that means that I could theoretically substitute the GU with that to make it one line. Um, but however you want to do it. I tend to, by the way, my instinct is to do it the first way. So to have two separate lines. Uh, and that's just because um, I like, I'm not a math guy. So if I'm looking at somebody's code, I would rather see two or three simple calculations that I can figure out than having one really with bunch of parentheses and all kinds of crap I'm trying to, what, what are they doing here, right? So I would rather see multiple simple lines of code than, than um, you know, one line of code that does 50 things, one calculation that does 50 things or, or one, um, yeah, the calculations, you know, combined, which you can do. And I have, I have no problem with it. It's just my instinct has always been, and maybe it's because I'm not that great at math. Um, <clears throat> that I like to be able to, oh, you're doing this here, this here, this here, this here, this here. Got it. And then you come up with the, with the answer. Would we be marked down? No, you may. It's it's not so complicated. Um, <laughs> and by the way, it's probably more correct. I tend to go into the, when I do math like that. Um, I tend to use more memory spots, more variables, and um, it, technically, it's more efficient to use less variables. Um, so. <laughs> Technically, my way is a little bit less correct than the the the, the better way, or is less better. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, I just like it because it makes it simple. Now, in our case, we're going to have two lines or one line. I can figure it out. If you combine it into one line, I can figure it out. It's not that difficult. Um, yeah, and, and that's exactly what I what I said. Um, you know, uh, again, you may want to spell out CPG because that's not a commonly used term. It's only known because of us. Uh, the problem is, is um, the use of more variables. So, right, if we do gallons used, I have to create a variable for gallons used. So if we do it in two lines, I have an extra variable. So when I'm doing a very complicated uh, set of calculations, 50, instead of combining it into one and just using one variable, instead of you know, uh, maybe having to come up with extras, that's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about uh, efficiency. Um, we're creating more variables using more RAM. And we had this discussion a little bit earlier. 
So technically that's less efficient and uh, frowned upon. But uh, like I said, I like to see simple math, but uh, in this case, both ways are simple math to me. Um, and lastly, we display our result. In our case, you're gonna display the result rounded to two decimal places. So we're gonna use a format option. So we're gonna display our, our trip cost rounded to do two decimal places because that's how we're gonna, you know, we display dollars and cents. We don't use, you know, 12 decimal places for dollars and cents. So basically we're just gonna have something like, you know, format. I always wanna capitalize everything. Could you be showing your screen? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I should. Whenever you see me looking over there and you don't see anything, I just got rid of the whiteboard. So I'm gonna use, you know, format. And then uh, in parentheses, I'm going to display, you know, the name of the variable. And, and by the way, I don't have a name of a variable, so uh, I didn't create it. So it, it'd be trip cost. <clears throat> it's not gonna like me because there is no such thing. But I just wanna show you. So, and by the way, the name that you named your variable, <clears throat> and then uh, we would format it to two decimal places. And by the way, um, it would be a print line. And, you know, we would have a sentence also. Um, and the sentence would be something like, you know, your total trip cost is, or the cost for this trip is, and then we would, you know, f so we have extra stuff. But I'm just saying that, you know, you're going to display the cost of the trip formatted to two decimal places. And <clears throat> with formatting, you could do uh, dot 1F, dot 2F, dot 3F, dot 4F, dot 5F, and this is in general, not just for our program. Uh, basically, the F stands for decimal places. So since we don't use the word decimal, uh, there is no decimal data type. We call it a float. It, it would make more sense if, if uh, you know, it said 2D, 4D, and then you could say, oh, four decimal places, four decimals, right? Uh, but just think, you know, uh, 2F as forcing two decimal places. By the way, it will force, it will make um, decimal data types that have more than two decimal places, it will shorten them to two and round up if it needs to. But if our value is an integer, so if it's a whole number and it has no decimal places or it only has one decimal place, it will force two decimal, so it'll add a zero or it'll add two zeros. So when we format it as 2F, it will always show 0.12. So it'll always show two decimal places. Whether it, it, if the answer was a five, it would just fill those two decimal places with zero, so it'd be 5.00. And if the answer was five point, you know, two, four, six, eight, it would show uh, 5.25. It would shorten it. Okay, so um, again, this is how we use the format. Uh, you're obviously in your print statement going to have a literal also associated with it. So if I close this and open the Drake equation again, come on. Uh, you can see, ah, come on, here, the second print, they have a literal here. And then they, you know, here we would have our format. So it would, they're rounding, okay? So they're rounding the number so they show no decimal places. So uh, in our case, it would say um, format, you know, trip cost, comma, quotation uh, point 0.2F, quotation, 
And then if we had something else, we would just attach that to the, to the end there. Okay, so again, uh, I don't know what it is that you're gonna, uh, how you're gonna display your trip cost, what the sentence is gonna be that it's wrapped around uh, or put into, but there you go. Now let's talk about, what did we, what did I forget to talk about? I forgot to talk, I, well, I didn't get to talking about, we talked about in lecture. Order of operators. Order of operators, is that where I left off? Or was it operators that I, where I left off? I can't remember. By the way, identifiers. So that's the name of our variables. What's correct, what isn't correct is here in the book. Um, I can't remember what I talked about in lecture, where I stopped, but... Um, did we talk about mods? Yes, you you talked about mods and what order they what order they uh, was it in was it in lecture or was it in lab? Because you were driving. Oh, I'm sorry, it, it, it was in lab, and I couldn't yeah, okay. look at the screen because I was looking at traffic. Okay, so let's talk about operators. Um, I'm going to move my book. There we go. Okay. So we have regular operators. Uh, this is just math stuff. So if I do five minus three and I press enter, I get an answer. Uh, that's subtraction, right? So we use a minus uh, uh, subtraction sign or a minus sign. Um, if I do um, five plus three. Now, by the way, when you are writing code, uh, we always put spaces around operators, mathematical operators. The equal sign is an operator too, by the way. Uh, so I'm not doing that here, but theoretically I should have done this. Okay, I should have put a space around the plus. It doesn't make any difference in the execution, but it's standard practice. And if you look at any uh, illustrations in the book or examples in the book, uh, it's always putting a space around stuff. So we also have uh, multiplication where we use the asterisk. And we have a division where we use a forward slash. So those are the normal ones. We have a couple that are different. So let's do... Um, I'm going to do this nicely. So that is called a truncated division. And basically what's that going to, that's going to do is it's just going to return the whole number of a, so the actual answer is 1.6666666666 to infinity. But if I use the double forward slashes, it's going to just show me the integer part of the answer. So in this case, it's one. Sometimes we need to do that. I can't think of an exa example right now, but um, sometimes we need to do that, okay? <clears throat> now, the other one is what we call a um, modulus. And that is if I do say five, and we use the percent sign in between and three. And what the modulus does is it returns the remainder. So we know that three goes into five one time and it has a remainder of two. So the answer here should be two and it is. And by the way, this is a little bit tricky it's not as straightforward as it sounds. And the reason is, so I'm going to do, let's just do um, 15. Well, no, let's do an easier number than that. So let's do uh, seven 
and we're going to divide that seven by five, right? So it goes in one, then I have a five, then I have a remainder of two, right? But then I, you know, have this imaginary zero and we do that. So the answer is 1.4. But the modulus returns the remainder, which is two. Okay, so you have to be, it's not four <laughs> or point four. That's not what we're returning. Okay, so right, if I multiply, or how many times does five go into seven? It goes in one time. And what's left over? Two is left over. I'm not actually doing the how many times does five go into? By the way, point four, I think, of five is two. I think. I'm not sure. I think if we do point four, here, let's just do it. You don't have to watch. 0.4 times 5 equals 2. Yes, I am correct. <laughs> so remember that we're returning. Oops, I gotta unclick that. Remember that we're returning the remainder. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, and see, I'm not lying. If you look at my if you look, 0.4 times 5 is 2. <clears throat> okay, so those are the tricky ones. Um, we also have exponents. And if we want to write exponents, we do, uh, let's 5 to the second power. We do two multiplication signs. So it's two of those. And then if I want to do it to the second power, that's, oops, 5 times 5, that should be 25, and it is. Okay, so that, that's how we write um, that. And there's a whole section on um, operators, 58, I think is what the page number is, um, and it tells you exactly what they are. Uh, truncated float, and then we have that. And then we move down. Ah, operator precedence. What time are we done? When did we start? One? Are we done already? We're theoretically, we are done. We should have six more minutes on paper. Oh, or six more minutes? Okay. <clears throat> so, um, the order of precedence which basically means what goes first. So remember that it's exponents go first, then multiplication and division, then addition and subtraction. Those are the things that are equal, okay? Now, I, I know parentheses come first, but I, I left it out on purpose. So um, that means that we have issues when we do something like this, Oops. Because our what's our answer going to be here? You can see that, right? What's the answer? It's four plus three times five. Wouldn't it be nineteen? It would be. And the reason is, is because we do the multiplication first, right? It has precedence in the order of precedence. So it's three times five plus four is what we're really doing, right? So it's 15 plus four is 19. And if I press enter, yay, I get 19, which is a problem because what if I want to do four plus three 
times five. I want to do the addition first, and hopefully you know that we put parentheses around it. Now what comes in parentheses goes first. So the answer here is going to be not 19. It's going to be um, 7 times 5, which is 35, right? We're going to do the addition first. Hey, what do you know it worked? So, um, by the way, if you have multiplication and division, so if you do uh, 5 divided by 3 times 6, those are both on the same level of precedence. So that means that they go, they st it does the division first, and then it does the multiplication. Um, addition and subtraction. If all you have is an equation with addition and subtraction, it starts at the left side and it just does it from left to right. Now, this is fairly simple um, because really, does it matter the, the order that I do it? Um, I don't know. Do I get a different answer if I do this? Of course I do, right? So if I do the multiplication first, I get a different answer. So still, we have to be careful about what it is that we want to do first. But if I do this, oh, I get a different answer completely. Um, if I do 3 times 6, divided by five, yeah, that's still a different answer. I've got three different answers, right? <laughs> so um, we have to be careful about what it is that we want to happen first. And so parentheses are the, the preferred way of doing it. Now, what's a little bit tricky is when we are doing mods. So let's say that I want to do uh, mods and, uh, by the way, um, module, uh, the remainder are called mods. Mods are, and truncated division, are on the same level as multiplication and division. So they'll go first. So if I go um, five mod two divided by 10, Right, five mod two is five divided by two, um, the remainder of one divided by 10 is one tenth, right? I, I should have done a multiplication. So uh, that would give me 10, right? So five mod two times 10 gives me 10, right? Because what's the leftover from the division uh, five divided by two? How many times does two go into five? It goes in twice and that's four, right? That's a four. So what's my leftover? What's the remainder? One. So if you think back to third grade or second grade when we started doing division, you'd say four R1, remainder one. So this is, and here we would say two remainder one, right? Uh, two goes into five two times with a remainder of one. Um, and then I multiply that one by 10, gives me 10. So um, it's gonna do the mod first and then the multiply that. And that's because it's on the same level of precedence. If I had it backwards, if I did the multiplication first and then the mod, it would do the multiplication first and then the mod statement. And the same thing with, um, because they're on the same precedence level. By the way, 
exponents obviously go first and they go from oddly enough from right to left because we do the exponent thing this way backwards okay so having said that yes okay so now i'm good so that's uh let's see that's everything that i needed to talk about i'm pretty sure um so next lecture Yeah, the comma makes a big difference there. I'm trying to make sure that I, I didn't skip something that I, I talked about in the other lab. Okay, so next lecture we will talk, we will start with um, uh, not operator, data types, and yeah. We'll talk about data types a little bit. We've already done it. Um, yeah, we'll talk about stuff. Uh, there's plenty to talk about. Okay, so having said that, uh, let me stop recording.